Eyes of Elba in Class D2 competition. Hi again, everybody. I'm Kevin Kugler, along with Kathy Wieskamp, and welcome to the Class D2 State Championship between the Paxton Tigers and the Elba Blue Jays. Kathy, you've got, again, a repeat performer. You've got a Paxton Tiger team that's very familiar to this state tournament. They are two-time defending state champions. They won in D2 in 2002 and in D1 in 2003. They know what to do when they get here. They've been here, and they've played well all season to get here as well. So it should be a good matchup. Again, comfortable setting for them. Well, of course, the Coliseum new for everybody here. Let's see where these two schools are located. Paxton in western Nebraska and Elba in south central or just central Nebraska, depending on your view of the state of Nebraska. That's where they are in Class D2. Here's how they got here. Paxton, a sweep of Wheeler Central and of Kennesaw. And for Elba, sweep of Hampton and then a five-set thriller over Clearwater to make it here to this Class D2 state championship. Elba at 31 and four. This is their first ever appearance in the state championship game. For Paxton, as we mentioned, they've been here before, 24 and 0. It's the Paxton Tigers and the Elba Blue Jays coming up in a moment on NETV Sports. The Class D2 state championship about to begin between the number two seed Paxton Tigers and the number five seed Elba Blue Jays as we get set for this one to begin. A thriller we expect to be a real good one. This should be a real solid matchup between Paxton, who's been here before, and Elba, who came into this as the number five seed, but they have worked their way to this state title game. And right now, we'll just wait and see exactly who is going to come out on top in this state championship for Class D2, our fifth championship match of the day. We've crowned four champions, Bellevue West in Class A, Humphrey St. Francis in D1, Lincoln Lutheran in C1, and West Point Central Catholic in Class C2. D2 and B still to come in the Class D2 finals about to begin between the Paxton Tigers and the Elba Blue Jays. And the teams making their way out onto the court, Paxton in the black and white, the Jays of Elba in the purple and gold. And let's go to state volleyball announcer Dwight Winnegar for the Class D2 player introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, its member schools, and U.S. Bank, welcome to the University of Nebraska Coliseum for the 2004 Class D2 Volleyball State Championship Game. Tonight's match features the Paxton High School Tigers versus the Blue Jays of Elba High School. And now, let's meet the players and coaches competing in tonight's match. First, for the home team, the Paxton Tigers. Number one. Stacy Runback. Number two, Lindy Apollius. Number three, Danielle Peterson. Number four, Amanda Gifford. Number five, Samantha Bowman. Number six, Gwen Stokey. Number seven, Alex Barger. Number eight, Mallory Perlinger. Number nine, Betty Fisher. Number 10, Tara Beverly. Number 11, Hillary Martinoski. Number 12, Jana Perlinger. Number 13, Madison Holt. And number 15, Ember Meyer. Assistant coach for the Tigers is Pam Perlinger. The head coach is Jody Rhodes. And now for the visiting team, the Blue Jays of Elba High School. Number one, Kelsey Dimmitt. Number two, Brenda Saferi. Number four, Brittany Christensen. 
Number six, Tracy Peterson. Number seven, Nicole Burson. Number eight, Sarah Frederick. Number nine, Christina Hedrick. Number 10, Jackie Busset. Number 11, Katie Paz. Number 13, Diane Brumbaugh. Number 14, Kelsey Kemp. Number 15, Melissa Wells. Number 16, Heather Gray. And number 17, Brandy Rasmussen. Assistant coach for Elba is Trina Krinsky. The head coach is Matt Cage. The Paxton Tigers at 24 and 0. The Elba Blue Jays at 31 and 4. For Elba, their first ever appearance in the state title game. For Paxton, they have made it here several times. The D2 champs in 02, the state champs in D1 last year, D1 champs in 86 and in 94. Paxton has been just dominant all season long. They've dropped just five games all year. They beat Ansley 3-2 to two to get to the state tournament, but they have been absolutely overwhelming at times this season for opponents. Definitely, and again, they're, they're a perfect season, but they've had some hard-fought battles. They're gonna use those as they come in today. They're also gonna use their experience here and the tradition their school has playing in the state tournament. Hopefully, they're gonna draw from that as they try to get another state championship. The Paxton Tigers and the Elba Blue Jays. Elba with losses this year to Kennesaw, Clearwater, Hampton, and Gibbon. Elba and Paxton about to begin in the Class D2 state championship. NETV Sports coverage of the Nebraska High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. By Brian LGH Medical Center, the first name in healthcare. By the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, promoting soy biodiesel fuel, clean burning and renewable, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants, and college planning services. All right, the Class D2 state championship about to begin. The Paxton Tigers and the Elba Blue Jays meeting here in the D2 title game. Elkhorn and Pius X still to come tonight in our evening session. Four champions crowned today, and Jody Rhodes looking for another state championship. It would be their third in a row if they win this one here. Paxton's enrollment going back and forth. And Paxton now back in D2 after being in D1 last year and in D2 the year before. They don't care where they are, they just want to win a championship. That's right, and again, it just goes to they're focused, they're not worrying about who we're competing against. We're just gonna worry about what we can do and we're gonna play hard no matter what class we're in. For Elba, Matt Kane, the head coach. This is their first ever appearance in the state title game. So a big day for Elba. Perlinger on serve and we're ready to go. Seferic, and a free ball now for Paxton. What can they do with it? In the middle, and it goes long. Amber Myers just getting a little bit underneath the ball. Again, always as we start these games, you tend to see a few jitters getting out here. And they're not smooth starts generally. One nothing Elba. Paxton certainly has a size advantage here. Seferic in the middle, kept alive by Fisher. And underneath, crossing the line, a point for Elba, and it's two nothing. Christina Hedrick serving for the Blue Jays. A 2-0 lead for Elba here in game one. Peterson sets it for Meyer, and Meyer delivers the kill. Meyer's again, very feisty, aggressive attacker. That's why they wanted to um, go. She missed the first one, came back good. Air correct. 2-1 Elba. Seferic. So 
to Wells. Good up by Beveridge. Fisher sails it long, and Elba leads three to one here in game one. Kind of like we saw last game, Elba coming in very aggressive, popping out um, from the start, just feeling very comfortable. They've earned their right here, and they're feeling very um, confident. Peterson sets it for Meyer, and Meyer just cuts it right down to the floor. Again, just a strong cut shot. She takes it across the body and is able to get it around the block. Myers is a very aggressive attacker in the middle. Elba leading 3-2. Seferic for Melissa Wells. Second pass. Elba back to work. Seferic this time for Frederick. And Frederick rolls it wide. And a point for Paxton. They're tied at three. Frederick comes here, she tries, she sees she has some space on the outside, just cuts it a little bit sharp. Short serve, and it drops. An ace for the Paxton Tigers and Danielle Peterson. And they're trying to get back in and get in the groove here, get loosened up and get in their system. Nearly back-to-back -back aces, and the Jays still can't get it over. Danielle Peterson serving tough for Paxton. They've taken a 5-3 lead. She leads this team coming into the state tournament. 34 service aces. She's doing well right now. Seferic to Wells. Fisher. Good up for Elba. Now Frederick tips it around the antenna. It's out and a point for Paxton. 6-3. The Paxton Tigers lead in game one. Just a little frustration, trying to get it in, just off the net, hard to push it and control it. Seferic in the middle to Wells. Big block by Amber Meyer, 7-3 Paxton. Wells leads the Blue Jays. She has 390 kills coming in this season, but she's here faced with Myers. That's a huge block. You got to work around her. You can't go through her. 7-3 Paxton. Danielle Peterson in her second season as Paxton's starting setter. Serve right on the line. Free ball now for Paxton. Peterson. And to the floor. The Paxton Tigers continuing to keep it going. Jonna Perlinger on the first end of that shot. Wells. Set up now for Perlinger again. Frederick. Peterson in the middle. Big swing. Seferic with an ice up. Good rally going here. A little bit of a miscommunication. Paxton with the tip. Peterson for Fisher. Kept alive by Elba. Good rally. Peterson again to Perlinger. Kept alive by Seferic. What an up. Great plays. Peterson. Meyer. And to the floor, Melissa Wells with the block. Just both teams. Great job staying organized. Nothing ever real pretty. Here Myers goes up, but Wells is there right to, to meet her at the net. Melissa Wells. 35 blocks on the year and a big one there for Elba. 8-4, Paxton in game one. At the net, kept alive. Meyer, can't clear it. 8-5, Elba making a run. Elba again playing very strong and confident. Well serving. Peterson, Perlinger down the line. Good up by Seferic again. Burson, and pounded home by Meyer. Her height is going to be hard to deal with. Definitely. She's up there, and she keeps her hands high when she's in her base position. She's up high here. She's reaching up over the top when she's aggressive. So she's, she's both reaching high on attack, and her hands are there interfering on the block. Madison holds it to serve. Meyer out right now. Burson. Seferic to Kelsey Dimmitt. Now Fisher's turn, and Fisher delivers the kill for the Paxton Tigers. They lead 10-5 in game one. 
Fisher comes in nice strong approach. She comes in a good angle to get her shoulder on the ball and is able to really outpower the block. Holes on serve. Seferic. And a kill for the Elba Blue Jays. Kelsey Dimmitt, the 5'4 senior, delivers. Dimmitt comes in. Again, the blocker's timing. They were going up at different times. She takes advantage. Sarah Frederick serving 10-6. Paxton leads in game one. Perlinger cannot connect a point for Elba. It's 10-7. Sarah Frederick serves. Oba just continuing to fight. Perlinger again. This time she's able to connect. And Mallory Perlinger, when she hits, she hits with authority. Again, good, strong, good connection here this time. She gets her hand on the ball, stays focused, and nice, hard, powerful attack. 11 7 Paxton. Dimmitt. Again, a hitting error for Paxton, Jonna Perlinger, and a point for Elba. Really, Perlinger here doesn't quite get her shoulder in good position to hit the ball. It's crossing her body. Tough ball to hit. Got to be real accurate. Beverage setting for Perlinger. Off the shoulder of Melissa Wells, but staying alive. Peterson sets it up for Perlinger in the middle. And again, another hitting error for Paxton. And those hitting errors starting to crop up. They're definitely not helping their cause here, and it's really giving a lot of momentum to Elba. Two-point lead for Paxton. Beverage to Perlinger. Good up by Wells. Free ball now for Paxton. What will they do with it? Peterson to Beverage. On the tip, but right there to joust with Seferi. Second pass, and Elba with a good ball to work with. Peterson back to Beveridge. Wells with the up again. This time behind to Perlinger, and it's in just inside the line. Jonna Perlinger and a 12-9 lead for Paxton. Donna Perlinger doesn't really get a strong approach, but she has enough topspin and good wrist snap to keep it in play. When Stokey serve, short serve. Paxton trying to get organized with Beveridge, and it's long. Paxton. Elba hanging around. Paxton is really making hitting ears. They're not getting off in their transition so that they can drive and keep that ball in front of them. They're taking it from behind their head. Obviously, then it tends to go long. Kelsey Kim, the senior in to serve. 46 aces on the year for Kim. Perlinger. Good up for Elba as they continue to scrap. Peterson. In the middle, Perlinger to the floor. Mallory Perlinger again with the kill. Comes in again. She wanted a clean hit. She catches the tape, but really working hard in transition, trying to get a better, strong approach. Perlinger on serve. Seferic to Wells. Beverage. Seferic once again to Wells. And Wells with the kill. And Elba pounds it home there within two. Wells does a nice job here. Instead of going straight ahead into the hands of Meyer, she goes off the edge. That's what she needs to continue to do. Christina Hedrick serves for the Blue Jays of Elba. Danielle Peterson to Meyer, who's back in. And Meyer drops it in for the kill. And Paxton leads by three. Myers does a good job. She doesn't get, again, a real solid hit, but she's got such a long arm and a big hand. She's able to make the play. 14-11, Paxton. Seferic to Wells, and Wells with a kill. Melissa Wells working around the block of Meyer. She found out where it was early on, and since then, she's really made some nice adjustments hitting around the edges. 14-12, Paxton. Seferic serving for Elba. And Seferic with the ace serve. It's 14-13. Paxton's lead is one. Seferic to work again. Great job with Perlinger just to get a hand on that sinking serve. Kept alive. Elbow with a good ball. Dimmitt sets for Wells. Wells ties it at 14. Wells is really doing a very nice 
shot. She's reading the block and she just wrist rotates off the edge. Also getting nice top spin on it so it doesn't go wide out of bounds. Seferic so into the net, service error. Paxton by one. 15 14. Jonna Perlinger back into the lineup for Paxton. We got us a ball game here. Danielle Peterson to serve. Seferic to Wells. Big block by Amber Meyer. Not going to get around that one. Meyer's, a, again, huge block. Wells has been getting around her. She slides a little bit to the left. Stops the shot that's been working for Wells. 16-14 Paxton. And a four hit against the Elba Blue Jays. Paxton leads by three, 17-14. Peterson again to serve for Paxton. Peterson sets. Meyer didn't get a real good swing on that. And now Elba back over the net. Meyer once more. This time she gets a real good swing and pounds it through the block of Wells. She did a better job getting off in her transition so she could drive hard in her approach. She really, Wells is there, but just overpowers her. Danielle Peterson ready to serve for the Tigers. So Farrick to Wells. Peterson in the middle to Meyer. Good up by Frederick. Right at the net, and a lift is called against Elba. A point for Paxton, they lead by five. So Farrick really had ball down too low again. You're gonna almost always get called for a double contact or a lift. Danielle Peterson. A serve for Peterson. 20 to 14, Paxton leading by six. She's led this team in the service ace categories, and right now she's serving well. She did early on in game one also. Peterson to serve. Seferic. Kibbit gets it across the tape. Push toward the corner and in by Danielle Peterson. And everything working for Paxton right now as the Elba Blue Jays go to the bench. And Jackie Prusek will check in. Peterson does a nice job, pops up. Instead of setting it to her team, she finds the open spot on the court. Nobody there. Wells can't clear the net. 22-14, Paxton pulling away here in game one. Tough ball, a little low for Wells to get a shot off, especially when she's got a huge block um, facing her at the net. So Farrick back to Wells, and Wells with a big kill for Elba. They needed that, and Wells is the who they, they tend to go to. She led this team. She actually had a, more than double kills than any other player on the team, so she's really a big producer. And a service error for Melissa Wells. Paxton two points away here in game number one, and Madison Holes will check in to serve. Loader across, Seferic, long set. Punched up into the air, Seferic to cover. And now Burson, and Burson comes through with the kill. Elba within seven. Elba's really been effective out of the middle. When you're in the middle, you got a lot of lane off the angles to play with, um, to attack at. You just gotta make sure you got a lot of snap on it. Peterson to Fisher, and Betty Fisher with the kill. And now Paxton with game point number one here in game one. 24-16, Paxton leading. Fisher to serve for the Tigers. Seferic to Dimmitt. Dimmitt sails it long. And the Paxton Tigers take game one of this D2 state championship. Your final score in game one, Paxton 25 and the Elba Blue Jays 16. Game two of the D2 title game coming up in a moment on NETV Sports. Twenty-five, sixteen. Paxton wins game one. Welcome to the NU Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska, along with Kathy Wieskamp. I'm Kevin Kugler. The D2 state championship right now, Paxton in the lead. One game to done, long way to go, and let's take a look at the stats from game one. Some interesting numbers. The digs showing the scrappiness of the Elba Blue Jays, but Paxton with some pretty strong 
attacks. And, and really, they're scoring aggressive swings at the net. That's really made a difference for them. And aces, we, pretty even there. Blocks were even two great blockers in the middle facing each other. So really, kills making the difference in game one. Paxton feeling very confident right now as they win game number one. They've lost just five games all season long. But two of those came in the last game before the state tournament. So Paxton, certainly a vulnerable team, certainly a team that can be beaten. And Elba's won 31 times this year. They've certainly, they certainly know how to win matches. And they've had a lot of experience, a lot of sweeps on their record as well this year. And they've came out really strong here in game one, really kind of the underdog if you I want to look at it that way. Not expected maybe to be there the fifth seed coming into this finals, but have played well, earned their way here, and started out. They just need to continue to push through the mat. Headed now for game number two. And Elba's Kelsey Kim will serve. Peterson sets it up for Meyer. Nice up by Kim. And a kill for the Elba Blue Jays. They started game one with a lead. They'd like to maintain that lead here in game two. Big block blocks a little bit early. They go up and slightly on their way down. That's allowing the uh, ball to come right over the top of them. one nothing Elba. And a service error makes it 1-1. One -one. Paxton's Tara Beveridge will serve. Just underway here in game two of the D2 state championship. Wells. And now Elba with a good ball to work with. What can they do with it? Not a lot. Good one for Paxton now. Peterson to Meyer to the floor. Amber Meyer didn't really get rolling in game one. They'd love to see her here. Good timing here. She really hasn't had a good time in connection with her setter yet. There they get a great um, connection. 2 1 Paxton. Hedrick. Fisher's swing. And now Elba back to work with Hedrick again. Great up by Perlinger to keep it going. And a lift is called against Paxton. A point for Elba, and we're tied at two. Elba playing very aggressive right now. Doing well at the net. 2-2 in game two, and Christina Hedrick serving. Peterson, second pass, dumps it down. Nice decision by the senior. They got to keep track when she's in front row. She's a viable attacker. Here she goes up. No blockers crediting her for being that. Good low serve. Frederick. Peterson now. And Perlinger wide on the shot. We're tied at three. Paxton and Elba here in game two. Peterson wants to get that ball a little tighter than that. Let her hitters drive to the ball. She's really pushing about the eight foot line. They'd really prefer it up at about three foot. Peterson to Meyer. Good up by Beveridge. Fisher. Now Elba back to work again. Frederick. Fisher will set for Meyer. Again, Elba right there to cover. Kelsey Dimmitt punched in the air. Paxton in some trouble. They keep it going. At the net, and a lift is called. Elba really worked hard for that point. He did. They just got, it got scrappy, keep pursuing the balls. Wasn't necessarily pretty, but they did do it. 4-3, Elba leads. Peterson for Meyer. And Meyer cannot keep it alive. No, they'll call a lift. Wow. That was almost a fantastic play by Elba. Again, they continue to be feisty, keep going for balls. They get never, never quitting on a ball. 4-4. Four, four. Holtz to serve. Wells, battle at the net with Perlinger. Elba needs to get it over the net. They can't. Wide and out, a point for Paxton, 5-4 in game two. Yeah, really, you can see Alba's really not getting in a good position on those attacks. They got to make a smart play there. Maybe just keep that in. Dimmitt. Right back over. 
Played now for Paxton in the middle and a free ball for Vorelba. Frederick kept alive, trying to cover his beverage and a free ball for Elba again. Good hustle for Paxton. In the middle, Wells. Peterson to Fisher. Deep shot. Dimmitt chases it down. What a long rally. Down the line wide from Jonna Perlinger. And we're tied at five. Elba in the points they're scoring. They're working awfully hard for it. Definitely. They are earning every one of them. They're being very disciplined, continuing to work after every ball. Peterson to Perlinger. And Frederick into the net, a net violation for Paxton and Elba with the lead. 6-5, the Blue Jays out in front. Paxton again making several errors here in this game that lead directly to points. Three ball for Elba. Elba also serving pretty tough. Dimmitt to the floor. Kelsey Dimmitt with the kill. And Elba leads by two, seven to five. And really, they're making plays out of situations that aren't just perfect. But again, they're trying to, to better the ball. They're just keeping it alive and letting Paxton make the errors for them. Peterson to Fisher. Set up for Wells from the back row. Peterson again, this time for Perlinger. Great up, pounded back, kept alive again. What an up by Melissa Wells. Elba really digging. Frederick with the kill. Sarah Frederick gives Elba the three-point lead. Really, Elba right now is, is working hard. They're making shots. They're making plays. If they don't have them, they're keeping it in, making you have a chance to have an error. Peterson to Mallory Perlinger. And Perlinger gets the touch and the kill. Paxton down two in game two. That's what Paxton needs. He's really strong and good attacking. They've made some errors here lately. They need to get back on track. Betty Fisher. Seferic. Back across. Paxton will set up. On the tip. Good up again by Wells. She's been all over the floor in game two. Peterson to Beveridge. Wells starts it off in the middle now to Burson. Burson with the kill. Elba by three, nine, six. Mallory Perlinger in the middle kind of rolled an ankle in the middle of that play. She's kind of been limping around. She's their middle blocker and, and really not being very effective. She's not jumping real well. Perlinger gets up on that swing. Beverage down the line, misses it wide. And another hitting error gives Elba the four point lead. And Elba's just being very methodical. They're doing what they need to do, letting Paxton make the errors and the points for them. Madison Holds will check in. Amanda Gifford will sit down. Paxton trying to change things up and slow the momentum. Perlinger. Dimmitt. Big block by Perlinger. Mallory Perlinger gets the block. And now Gwen Stokey will check back into the game. Perlinger again just kind of got that tweak out of her ankle back in. She's looking just as good as ever right now. Stokey serves. Set up for Hedrick. Sails it long. And a hitting error for Elba. And the Tigers of Paxton creep within two. Stokey serves again. Seferic rolls it off of Perlinger. And now Beveridge is try way long. Elbow with the point, 11-8. Elbow leading in game two. Beveridge there again, she's getting caught underneath the ball. It's very difficult to snap that in play. Got to stay behind and drive, keep it in front. Peterson for Beveridge. Much better. Elbow just making some wise shots and Paxton making some errors. And Perling in there just reacting, stepping in his aggressive play, just couldn't get on top. 12-8 and 13-8 with the ace serve. The Elba Blue Jays rolling here at game two. Kelsey Dimmitt 
on her serve, but first the substitution. Amanda Gifford back in for Madison Holes. Really, I was serving tough from the line. They stepped back there and been very aggressive with it. Erlinger, big swing, good up. Hedrick with the tip and into the net. A net violation on Paxton and another error at Elba with the lead. Elba is just allowing Paxton to continue to make errors and reap the benefits. Perlinger, again a hitting error for Paxton. 15-8, Elba with the lead. Perlinger again, just, again, coming up, just not on top of it. They're really not driving to the ball. If they just wait, stay back, they'll be able to make some adjustments to fix that. Peterson for Beveridge. And Beveridge gets the kill on the touch. And a big point for Paxton that allows him to get Amber Meyer back into the front row. 15-9, Elba still in control. Peterson to Meyer, and Meyer puts it down. Just good timing, they got a nice easy ball, they've all handled well. Myers is off at the 10 foot, she drives in and their best timing has been when she's gotten off and able to get to the ball in front of her. If Paxton's gonna crawl back into game two, it's probably gonna be on the right hand of Amber Meyer. Or maybe on the serve of Mallory Perlinger. She delivers the ace. One or the other, either way, they chalk up points for them. Big swing, too big for Christina Hedrick and a hitting error for Elba. And just like that, the lead is down to three and a timeout taken by Matt Kane and the Elba Blue Jays, 15 to 12, Elba leading by three. NETV sports coverage of the Nebraska High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. By Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The Blues are good for you. And by Art FX, a proud sponsor of Nebraska High School and Collegiate Athletics on NETV Sports. Elba leading 15-12. And the Paxton fans hoping Amber Meyer has a little magic in that right arm. They missed her in the front row in the rotation. She's up there now, and, and this is the time we're getting close to that critical stage right around 20. It's important they push here and Myers in the front is going to help them do that. 15-12, Elba leading by three. Mallory Perlinger serving for Paxton. Safaric on the second pass. Right at the net. Now Elba to work again. Safaric in the middle. Second pass and Meyer just whiffs on it. A point for Elba and another hitting error. Again, really, Paxton is, is hurting themselves with, with their hitting here. If they get back on track here, they're fine. They just get, need to make the adjustments themselves. It's nothing that Elba is really doing to them. Kelsey Kim on serve. Peterson has to go down on the knee to get that, and it's into the antenna. Tough ball to handle off serve receive, and Elba back out by five. The thing Elba's doing is really they're serving tough here. They're really keeping it in play. They're making shots. Again, nothing flashy, but just being very patient. Jonna Perlinger back in for Paxton. Trailing 17-12. Kim serving. Peterson to Meyer. And down the line and in. Another kill for Melissa Wells. Melissa Wells has been effective when she's taken this hard cut shot to the right, to the left side, excuse me. And uh, Myers did adjust earlier. She's moved back a little bit more straight on. She needs to keep uh, moving to the left. She wants to stop that. Kelsey Kim serving. Elba leading by six. 18-12, three straight points for Elba. Coming at a pretty good time. Meyer shot in. They thought it was long. It dropped down. Meyer gets the kill. And Paxton within five. Myers comes. She can hit over top the block. The two defenders were there. They followed it, but thought it's got to go out. And it drops inside. To Farrick, to Wells, and Wells delivers again. How about Melissa Wells in this game, too? She's really doing a tremendous job. She is their go-to girl, 
And right now they're going to where they got her in the front as much as they can. 19-13, Elba. Peterson for Meyer. Meyer with the kill. Maxton with it five. Meyer's a good swing of her own. She's been able to get off and drive to the ball. Very effective. Nice swing. 19-14. Peterson serving. And a lift is called on the serve. Peterson delivers a good one. 19-15. Elba up by four. So Farrick to Frederick. Everidge there to cover. Now Meyer drops it to the floor. Here comes Paxton again. 19-16 the lead down to three. The difference is they're, being, they're connecting and being effective with their attack. They made a lot of errors earlier. Now they're, they've changed that. They're back on track with their attack. So Farrick in the middle. And the shot wide from Melissa Wells. A point for Paxton, and they're as close as they've been in a long time. Danielle Peterson serving a nice run for the Tigers. Safari so cannot clear it on the second pass. It's a lift, and Paxton within one. Peterson serves for Paxton, trying to tie the match. Wells. Paxton's Fisher. And now back to Frederick. Kept alive. Fisher. Comes Elba again. Good ball to handle. Wells, full head of steam. And that one will drop. Mallory Perlinger couldn't handle it. Wells with the kill. And Elba by two. Wells has just been a, a consistent force in the middle. She's worked and been effective going to this left side. Comes back to it. 2018. Off the net and an ace serve. 21-18, Elba four points away from tying the match at one, and now Paxton will take the timeout. The Tigers had it within one, but two straight off the timeout for Elba, and they've extended their lead to three. This year marks NETV's 50th anniversary. It was in 1954 when NETV signed on for the first time. Now, 50 years later, we continue to serve the state of Nebraska through public television, radio, and educational media. Thank you, Nebraska, for 50 years of support to Nebraska ETV. 21-18 Elba. Paxton got within one, and then a well-timed timeout by Matt Kane. Able to settle Elba down, and they've run off a couple in a row. And we're at that critical point here where we're within four points of the game. Paxton needs to get it control, or Elma's going to push here to get these four. So Farrick. Free ball now for Elba. Good opportunity for the Blue Jays to add to that lead. Wells. Fisher sets it up. Good up for Elba. They keep it going to Meyer. Meyer now in the middle for Paxton. And she drops it to the floor. Amber Meyer with a big kill. She now leaves the front row, and Paxton has struggled when she's been on the bench. Definitely. She's up front here. She's got that high reach. She can go over the block. She does a nice job of tempo change. But now she leaves, as you said, and we'll see what happens. Madison Holtz with a serve. Seferic to Wells. Good up by Beveridge. Fisher delivers the kill, and Paxton back within one. Again, these Paxton players have a lot of experience. They're aggressive, have a very versatile attack. They've gotten in trouble because of errors. Right now, big, successful swing. Wells. Fisher sets it up. Perlinger's try. Now a good one for Elba. Here comes Wells again. And Wells delivers the kill. Good swing for Melissa Wells. She's really playing well. That rotates her to the back row, but that left side swing around the middle blocker is working for her, and she knows it. She keeps going with it. Elba three points away here in game two. Peterson to Perlinger. Perlinger wide, a hitting error. It comes at a terrible time for Paxton. 
Perlinger has had a little bit of trouble. You can see, too, as she's hitting here yet, she's underneath the ball. She's got to work hard, stay behind that ball, and she'll be able to make that adjustment, keep it in. Amanda Gifford checks in for Paxton. Overpass. Down the line, Perlinger trying. Frederick curls it around the antenna. Great save by Frederick. Peterson to Perlinger, and Perlinger delivers the kill. Paxton within two, 23-21 in game two. Perlinger here in the middle comes and takes a shot across her body, that sharp angle, getting hard for defense. They gotta get behind it. Fisher serves, and she serves up the ace. Betty Fisher with the ace serve, and Elba's lead is one. Fisher ready again for Paxton. Zafarek for Dimmitt. High in the air. Peterson to Beveridge. Good ball now for the Jays. Dimmitt. Peterson gets it up. Beveridge trying the tip. A little bit of confusion on the elbow side. They keep it going, though. Perlinger left-handed and into the net. A net violation on Mallory Perlinger and elbow one point away from tying the match. Perlinger again being aggressive, her left hand again not in its control. She's a right hand player. Follow through, it isn't able to cleanly contact it. 24 22, game point. Perlinger. Perlinger again. Dimmitt sets for Burson, and it's in! The Elba Blue Jays come back to win game number two. 25-22, Elba and Paxton tied at one. Game three is next in the D2 State Championship. Paxton and Elba have split the first two. The Class D2 state championship shaping up to be a real good one here at the Coliseum in Lincoln. Along with Kathy Wieskamp and our entire NETV sports production crew, I'm Kevin Kugler. And Paxton and Elba with the stats through games one and two. Really, Paxton has the lead in the kills, but really they had also a lot of hitting errors in that game. Digs go to Elba, they've been very consistent. They just continue to pursue balls, keep balls alive and in play. So really we're split, fairly even. Again, Paxton looks a little bit um, ahead in the kills, but other than that, pretty even all the way down. 25-16, Paxton dominated in game number one, but Elba really, really taking advantage of the errors and making some things happen on their own in game number two to get back even in this match. Definitely, they, they did a nice job and came out very poised. They began the game well, and, and I think that's an important thing for their confidence, too. They started off feeling comfortable out there, even though they had lost that first one. So a minimum of four games here in the D2 State Championship. We've had one five-gamer today. Lincoln Lutheran and Columbus Scotus, a thriller in C1. It went five, and Lutheran surprised Columbus Scotus for the C1 State Championship. It's just a great match played by both teams. That's what volleyball's about, great matches like that. Mallory Perlinger will start us off for the Paxton Tigers. Safaric to Wells. Peterson will track it down, and Meyer just able to get a finger on it, misdirect it, and gets the kill. If you look, Myers has some really large hands. She's able to get her hand on the ball, even if it's not ideal. So it's just large enough that she can control it and keep it in. one nothing Paxton. And a dump right over by Seferic. Nicely done by the junior setter. Seferic just kind of has a nice little roll shot. She lets it trickle off her fingers. Knew that open spot was available. 1-1 one, one here in game three. Let's serve. Meyer with the kill, Amber Meyer. When she's been in the front row, that's where Paxton's been the most effective. They've struggled with her on the bench. Yes, when she rotates out and she and Wells are matching up in the front, both teams two strong attackers. So it's good they're matched up together, but it creates some problems when they head out. Wide on the attempt from Elba and a point for Paxton. 3-1 Tigers here in game three. Tara Beveridge serving for Paxton. 
Seferic. Peterson now to Fisher. Elba just trying to get somebody to put a hand on it. Peterson sets it up for Meyer. Blocked right back by Wells, and Wells delivers the big stuff. Two great middle blockers here battling back and forth. Sometimes the block wins, sometimes the attack wins, but it, two really strong players. It's good, great to see them up there at the net together. Serve is wide, and the service error gives Pax to the two-point lead, 4-2 here in game three. Danielle Peterson serving for Paxton. Seferic to Wells. Off the net, and they cannot keep it in play. No, it does. It drops over the net and down. Myers really just sticks her hand out, punches it, and it pops just enough over the net and lands on the ground. Well, from our angle, it didn't look like it cleared, but it did. There, yep, just enough to get across. And a service error for Paxton. 5-3 lead for the Tigers. Melissa Wells serving for Elba. And an ace serve for Melissa Wells. She had 40 on the year. Add another one to those totals. So she moves to the back and still contributes a lot from that position in back. And back-to-back -back aces for Melissa Wells. Dropping the serve right into the open area. 5-5 in game three. Meyer. And off the net, a let is called, or a lift is called rather at Paxton with a 6-5 lead here in game three. Madison holds. Serving for Paxton. Meyer now out of the front row and on the bench for the Tigers. Point for Elba, 6-6 six, six here in game three. Just a great placement of the ball. It was not a, in a position they could, um, Elba could hit, so they dumped it in that vulnerable donut spot. Peterson to Perlinger, and Perlinger delivers the kill. Paxton looking for some offense when Meyer's on the bench, and maybe Mallory Perlinger is the one to deliver it. She comes in, she catches a little tape. She's working hard to get it under the big hands of the block but it's able to get it to fall for him. Betty Fisher serving for Paxton, leading by one. Seferic to Burson. Beverage. Beverage again. And a free ball now for Paxton. Peterson to Perlinger. Perlinger delivers the kill. Two big kills by Perlinger here in the middle. While Myers is out, they really need her to step up and, and get a lot of offensive action while she's up front. Betty Fisher serves. Seferic, and across the line, a point for Paxton, and the Tigers lead it 9-6. Betty Fisher to serve again. Seferic to Hedrick. And Beveridge will send it across. Seferic now behind to Dimmitt. And Dimmitt gets the kill. Kelsey Dimmitt. Dimmitt takes a tough ball that's really set behind her head. She comes in, reaches back, but that just takes a little bit off and puts the top spin on. Good adjustment. Beveridge to Perlinger. Perlinger is long on the swing, and Elba back within one, 9-8 here in game three. And another point for the Elba Blue Jays. This team just does not get down when they get down on the scoreboard. Definitely, and they are very confident. They just are very methodical and patient. Beverage to Perlinger. And Perlinger gets the kill, 10-9. Paxton by one as Gwen Stokey checks into the lineup for Jonna Perlinger. Seferic to Burson. Elba with a good ball to work with here. Burson in the middle. 
Buxton cannot get it. Burson with the kill, and we're tied at 10 here in game three. Burson really has made some nice shots at different times. She's kind of quiet, you know, in the shadows maybe of Wells, but she's really doing a nice, consistent job up front. Kelsey Kim serves. Berlinger drives it right off the blocker, Christina Hedrick, and now Meyer back into the front for Paxton. Perlinger ready. Seferic. Now Wells sends it across. Peterson will set it for Meyer. Block right there by Wells. Able to get in front of that potential kill. Good swing from Wells. Seferic goes this time to Hedrick. Kept alive, played off the net. Great up by Stokey. Great hustle. Wells again. Gets the touch and the kill, Melissa Wells. Another hard fought point for Elba. We've seen lots of long rallies in this match. Both teams very scrappy, can continue to work, keep balls alive. Here, Wells goes a little high off the hands of Myers. 11 11. Meyer with a kill. Took something off it and just put it in the opening. Really, and it's not always about power. Sometimes it's tempos and zones. You take a little bit off of it, you go to the right zone. It still counts as a kill. So Farrick to Wells. Meyer just keeps it alive. And just strung up hands. Wells again with the kill. Talk about strong. Melissa Wells getting stronger as this match goes on. And really they feed her and keep feeding her and she's getting in a comfort zone up there working around the edge and reading again where Myers is sitting off to her left or right. Seferic on serve. Peterson for Meyer. Meyer rolls it home. They want Amber Meyer as involved as she can be when she's in the front row. Blocking offensively, get the ball in her hands. She's got to get involved. That's where they score. Danielle Peterson serves. Seferic to Wells again, and Wells delivers the kill. Nice one-two showdown here between Melissa Wells and Amber Meyer. The middles taking center stage. And, and it's great. It, it's kind of fun that they are matched up against each other. Two strong players and battling it out one-on-one. -on -one. Meyer, big swing for Amber Meyer and Paxton back out. But now Meyer will sit down for Amanda Gifford. Meyer again coming in, big swing, really gets a lot of arm, reaching over the top. Lots of room to work with up there. Gifford in to serve. Perlinger for Perlinger. Frederick. And Frederick gets the kill. Sarah Frederick puts it down. We're tied at 14. Frederick takes a little bit off. It's a different speed, and the defense is caught, dug in, so it's hard for them to move forward quickly. Game three of the D2 final. Match tied at one. Perlinger long on the shot, and Elba leads by one. Ten points away from a two-game-to-none lead in the match, but a long way to go in this seesaw game three. Perlinger. Through the block and home, Mallory Perlinger with the kill. She's kind of been hot and cold. She has an air, but comes back here after it. Still very confident, strong attack. 15-15. Seferic to Burson. Beverage. Great shot selection by Tara Beveridge as she gets the kill. Beveridge had a ball she couldn't be aggressive and swing at, so she takes a two-hand and, and nice placement of the ball at sharp left front corner. 16-15, Paxton. Divot. Beveridge, long, no touch, a point for Elba. 16-16 in game three. Back and forth, back and forth. Divot serves. Good ball now for Elba. Seferic finds Hedrick. And Hedrick gets the kill. Christina Hedrick gives Elba the lead. 
Walker's a little timing problem. Hedrick comes up a, a little early. The block, again, just being aggressive with the swing. Beverage to Perlinger. Down the line, misses it wide. And a point for Elba, 18-16. The Blue Jays lead in a timeout taken by Paxton here in game three. Their first timeout with Elba leading 18-16. Any TV sports coverage of the Nebraska High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. By Brian LGH Medical Center, the first name in healthcare. By the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, promoting soy biodiesel fuel, clean burning and renewable, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants, and college planning services. 18-16, Elba in game three, leading the Paxton Tigers. Elba the number five seed. Paxton the number two seed and the two-time defending champion. They were the champs in D1 a year ago, the D2 champs in 02. So defending this championship in a different class this year. Perlinger with the kill off the blocker. And Paxton back within one. Gwen Stokey into the lineup. That's what Paxton, Paxton needs Perlinger just to be consistent in her attack. On and off. When she's on, she is on. Stokey a deep serve. Seferic for Burson. And Burson, who's had some nice swings tonight, gets the kill. She's just been consistent. She hasn't made very many errors, and when they go to her, she gets the job done. Boy, Elba, a very enthusiastic team. The bench very involved. This is a team that just oozes enthusiasm. Kelsey yeah. Kemp. It's fun to see. Beverage at the net, gets it down to the floor. And here comes Meyer back into the front row for Paxton. And again, welcome to entrance by Meyer. <laughs> Mallory Perlinger to the back row to serve. Perlinger delivers the ace serve to tie it at 19 in game three. These two teams just, again, it's fun to see both of them playing well, battling back and forth, and again, staying confident, consistent. Safari to Wells. Meyer in the middle. Kim. Peterson will feed again, this time though to Beveridge. Safaric in the middle to Wells. And Wells takes it off the block of Meyer and a kill for Melissa Wells. Myers did adjust. She moved and reached over to the left side, but Wells still able to hit the high hands and, and win the battle. 20 to 19, Elba five points away from a two game to one lead in the match. Set up for Meyer, cross court, and long. Elba by two, 21-19. So even with Meyer in the front, Paxton struggling to put points on the board. Elba continuing to keep the pressure on. Peterson to Meyer. Seferic finds Wells, and Wells just inside the line. 22-19, Elba by three. Wells adjustment, she's noticed uh, Myers going to the left. She turns and takes it to her right, just a smart attack. Two very evenly matched teams here. Hedrick serving. Meyer cannot clear the tape, it never got over, and Elba two points away in game three. And again, Paxton here is of late being plagued with airs. Hedrick to serve. Nearly the ace. Beveridge, walked back by Wells. On the tip, Meyer sends it over, but a lift is called. And Elba gets the point. Game point number one for Elba. Peterson to Meyer, and Meyer gets the kill. Meyer's just 
just needs to heat up here. She struggled as she came in this last rotation. Had a couple errors. There she gets a big exclamation point on that swing. Paxton still needs to run four in a row to keep this going. Frederick. Peterson sets it up for Fisher. Zafarik with the kill. And Elba is one game away from a state championship. 25-20. The Elba Blue Jays win in game number three. We're back for game four in a moment on NETV Sports. And welcome back to the NU Coliseum in Lincoln along with Kathy Wieskamp. I'm Kevin Kugler. 25-16 for Paxton in game one, but then Elba in games two and three, 25-22 and 25-20. As we look at the stats through three games here in the match, Paxton leading in the statistical categories, but Elba will give them that as long as they win the match. That's right, and, and there are a lot of errors that are scoring points for Elba, and that's not seen here in, in these statistics. Those errors are, are points in Pax, and Alva has really been patient and just let them happen, taking them as they get them. Well, if they're able to be patient for one more game, Elba will win its first ever state championship. Long way to go, though. Paxton champions so many times. This program in its 12th visit to the state tournament. Seven of those previous 11, they've made it to the title game, so they know what to do in the title game. But a frustrating night, I'm sure, for Paxton. As Elba serves into the net, Kelsey Kim starts off with a service error. Tara Beveridge on serve. Safaric to Wells, and Wells delivers the kill. 1-1 here in game four. Wells has delivered all night long, and she continues here as we begin game four. Just aggressive attacker. Paxton's Amber Meyer cannot connect. And everybody out of sync right now for the Paxton Tigers. And really, they're getting frustrated, and they really need to, again, that happened. They got to move on from that and quit um, focusing on that. They can come back. They're good players. Hedrick serve. Peterson. Fisher down the line. Good coverage by Dimmitt. Frederick. Peterson on the second pass. Can't clear the tape. And Elba, again, just keeping the ball alive, keeping the ball in play, and waiting for mistakes. They'll let you do it for them. And when they can, then Wells again gets in the action up front and does her job getting the kills. But Jill, if you're going to give me points for making errors, we'll take them. 3 1 Elba. Hedrick serving. And on the overpass, Axton going to work to Meyer. And a lift is called. Meyer gets the kill. 3 2 Elba leading by one and pulling her back into the lineup. In this matchup between Myers and, and really, Wells doesn't penetrate so well. Myers is able to sneak that ball underneath. 3 2 Elba. Safaric. Cross court to Wells. And a lift, it never cleared the tape, a four hit called. And we're tied at three here in game four. Ready to serve again. Safaric to Frederick. Perlinger long and another error for Paxton and a point for Elba, 4-3. Again, they've got to forget that. They've got to let that go and focus on techniques, keeping the ball in front, just things that will help them perform better. Peterson for Meyer. Put up by Safaric. Hedrick puts it in play deep and a little too deep. A point for Paxton. Much like game three, back and forth we go to start game four. Kind of been the theme. The, both teams really, nobody really stretching it out here. Tip back across and a good, strong front row play. Perlinger and Fisher right there, and Paxton leads by one. You can see balls real tight. Perlinger very aggressive at the net, goes up and just takes care of business. Dimmitt. 
Paxton going to work now in the middle. Perlinger with the joust against Wells. Fisher's try. Good up by Seferic. And out. It'll be a point for Elba. Perlinger trying to keep it alive, just could not. And frustrations you can see on her face. Melissa Wells serving in a 5-5 game four. Fisher rolls it home. Betty Fisher with the kill. Betty Fisher has really made some key kills at key times. Really, when they need it, she's been able to come up with one, get the ball in their hands, and then she served well as well. She's gone to the bat. Seferic. Frederick tries cross court shot ball 6 6 in game four. Frederick comes in, swings across her body. The defense really shifting to the left. She goes to the right. Berlinger. Try for Elba. Good up by Gifford. Beverage for Paxton. Seferic to Dimmitt. Berlinger with the tip. Now Seferic in the middle to Burson. They'll try this time to Frederick. And Frederick cannot clear it. It's a point. 7-6 Paxton. Big block up front. Perlinger does a good job. He gets over there on the close. Nice hand penetration as she reaches over the net. Mallory and Jonna Perlinger combining there. 7-6 Paxton in game four. Charging hard and long on the attempt from Christina Hedrick. Paxton with a two-point lead, 8-6. Gwen Stokey serving. Dimmitt. Perlinger. Elba now with a good ball to work with to Burson. Beverage. And a long try. Gifford there to dig. Beverage. Down the line and in, Tara Beveridge with the kill, and Paxton leads by three. Great line shot, she's got some swinging room there. They've given her an open lane, she works it in the corner. Nine, six, Paxton. In to serve, Perlinger back into the front row, Amber Meyer. Perlinger serves. Dimmit. Wrong server, I believe. That was a push, and Perlinger stepped back there and thought she was questioning that. The official blew the whistle, so Coach Rhodes told her to go ahead and serve, and it was the incorrect server. So they're getting all that worked out, making sure the girls are in the correct lineup now. Ask the official to make sure. Elba gets the point, and Dimmit gets the serve. 9-7. Jody Rhodes checking it over. Wants to get a lineup check just again. Better safe than sorry. We think we're right, but we want to make sure it's clear. Costs Paxton a point here in game four and the serve. And so that means Perlinger's in front. That means Myers is in the back. And if they want to choose to use the sub and take her out or if they're going to leave her in there, that's a decision Coach Rose is going to have, Rose is going to, have to make. He's discussing it right now with the official. And now with his assistant, Pam Perlinger. And now they'll send Amanda Gifford back in. So Gifford will go in and Meyer will go out. 9-7, Paxton with a two-point lead. A little bit of a delay there. Dimmitt's ready to serve now for Elba. Perlinger. And the shot just in the back corner. And now Meyer will come into the front row. This is where they want to be now. Mallory Perlinger serving. And a lift is called. Mallory Perlinger, two straight points, one on the kill and one on the serve. Damn it, they felt sad in her hands too long. You can have a double contact that first received, but not an extended contact. 11-7, Paxton, their biggest lead here in game four. Seferin. Person curls it around the antenna. Peterson tracks it down, and a free ball now to Elba. On the slide, Burson. Will this stay alive, Paxton? 
Seferic cross court. And now Paxton to work in the middle. Meyer. And a lift is called. 12 7. 12 7. Paxton with the lead over Elba in game four. If Elba wins, they're state champions in D2. If Paxton wins, we're going to a game five for the second time today in these 2004 State High School Volleyball Championships. We went to five in the Lincoln Lutheran Columbus SCOTUS game in C1. Won by Lincoln Lutheran. Seferic to Hedrick. And Hedrick gets the kill. Elba within four. Hedrick really just sneaks it in front of the block. The block has to make sure they seal the net reach over, and if not, it tends to slide right down the front of them. Kelsey Kim serving. Peterson to Meyer. Tips it up, great up by Dimmitt. Peterson again to Amber Meyer. At the net, the joust, and a lift is called. Elba gets the point. Within three. The Elba Blue Jays out in front, two games to one in the match. Trailing though in game four by three. Peterson for Meyer, trying to get her involved, and she does, gets the kill and extends that lead to four. Meyer's a powerful hitter, taking that with two hands above the head. Generally, that ball's traveling too fast, hard to control. You have to have really strong hands in the back. Tara Beveridge ready to serve. Seferic to Hedrick. Meyer just got a piece of it, misdirected it, and put it to the floor. Often those miss hits where you don't get a clean hand on the ball fall just because you can't read them, you don't know where they're going to go because nobody does, the hitter or the defense. 14 9 Paxton. Good up by Perlinger. Fisher. Now Wells cannot clear the tape. 15-9, Paxton leading in their most crisp game since game one. Wells comes in, she really barely gets turned around on her transition, isn't able to get a good contact on the ball. Elba in trouble immediately, and the point goes to Paxton. As Elba thrown off, 16-9, Paxton leading. Ball in the air and down the point for Elba. And Wells again coming up with a big swing on the outside, getting Elba the ball in their hands. She's in that front row. They really want to take advantage of that. 16-10, Paxton leading Elba. Peterson to Fisher, and Fisher gets the kill. Paxton starting to click a little bit here in game four. They were out of sync in two and three. Here, Fisher, she's made some nice shots today there. She's set out wide, has that sharp angle, good ball control. And that one falls again. And now Elba exhibiting some of the problems. They forced Paxton into two and three. 18-10, Paxton leading over Elba and a service error Danielle Peterson into the net and Elba back on serve with Brenda Safari effective timeout by Elba they want to get the ball back in their hands Safari nearly had the ace Paxton able to keep it in play Safari sets for Wells Peterson to Meyer pounds it home Amber Meyer with the kill She's very good up there in the front. She is driving hard to the ball. She is a tough attacker to stop. Amanda Gifford in now for Meyer, and she's into the back row to serve. 19-11 Paxton. Seferic to Wells, and Wells right through the block and to the floor. Wells moving to the back with that also, so both big hitters either out or in the back row. 19-12, Paxton. Wells serves. Fisher, good up by Wells. 
Free ball now for Paxton. Peterson to Perlinger. Perlinger with the kill. Nice shot from Mallory Perlinger. Mallory Perlinger can do it. She just has to get her confidence. She's been struggling a little bit. Here she comes up. She rotates to the front. That's a good start for her as she moved into the front row. Betty Fisher serves. Seferic to Frederick. Perlinger with the kill. Mallory Perlinger, 21-12. Paxton running away here in game four. Two back-to-back -back kills. She's working on the right side. It's been effective for her. Last swing, she comes back to it. Comes up with the same result. Peterson. And Perlinger somehow keeps it going. Peterson to Tara Beveridge. Swatted right back. Perlinger. Good up by Wells. Peterson for Perlinger who just comes over and does something with it. The ball went straight up in the air and Perlinger chased it down. Just a great athletic move by Perlinger. Ball wasn't set anywhere near where it was supposed to or where it was wanted to be. Perlinger makes the ball, takes the ball and betters it. Paxton by 10 in game four. Betty Fisher serves. Nearly an ace. Peterson for Perlinger. Dimmitt in the middle to Burson. And now Beveridge will try. And the shot just out. No, a touch is called at the last second and Elba gets the point, the touch is called. Touch is called here, said Perlinger got her fingers on it, just barely. Gives the ball to Elba and a point. Sarah Fredericks serving, trying to work Elba back into it here in game four. Jonna Perlinger, back across for Elba. And down, point for Elba. Good job by Kelsey Dimmitt to really just keep that ball in play, got it over, send it over, and let um, Paxton try and do something with it. Sarah Frederick serving. Perlinger to Mallory Perlinger. And into the antenna, Elba's Christina Hedrick. Into the game moments ago, Brittany Christensen, the 5-4 sophomore for Elba. She's on the court now for the Blue Jays. 23-14 Paxton. Christensen sets for Dimmitt. And Dimmitt puts it down. Just a great job, Dimmitt coming and up with a big kill. They really need that ball. Kelsey Dimmitt. Good serve. Perlinger charging hard. Gets the kill. Mallory Perlinger getting her game underneath her. Definitely. She's really composed herself and come back and played very well here in game four. She's come up big here in the late stages of it. And now she'll serve to send this to game five. Second pass sent over. Peterson to Meyer. Kept alive by Elba. Good ball now for Paxton. Peterson. Cross to Beveridge. Nice up by Dibbitt. Joust at the net. One by Christensen. Meyer. Good up again for Elba, but a lift is called. And Paxton sends it to a fifth and deciding game in the D2 championship. As they win game four, 25-15. Game five in the D2 champ coming up next. There is the story in the Class D2 State High School Volleyball Championship and Kathy Wieskamp for the second time today. We go to a game five. Let's look at the stats through four in the D2 title game. Up, this, up to this point, really, it has been pretty even. Paxton here exerting themselves. They're pushing up on the kills and assists. Digs very even. Both teams very scrappy out there. But blocks. Paxton's come up with a couple big blocks here. That it's really pushed them up. They played well here in game four. Kind of eliminated a lot of their errors and they are pushing this into a fifth and final game. It's been an interesting match. Paxton in the two games it's won has dominated in game one and four. 
in games two and three. It's been back and forth, but Elba has really taken advantage of some packs and errors and really put pressure on them, especially in two and three. They play consistent when Paxton struggled. They've just maintained their poise. They've been very patient. They've allowed those points to be accumulated for them, and then they've continued to do what they've done all along. Wells has been effective all night long, consistent and they continue to use her. Game number five will crown a D2 champion. Will it be Paxton or will it be Elba? First to 15 will hold the crown. Kelsey Kim will serve. Elba looking for its first ever state championship. Paxton looking for its third in a row. Peterson keeps it alive. Seferic to Wells. Peterson now back to work, heads for Meyer, and Meyer gets the kill, Paxton by one. Meyer's up front, they're gonna use her, she can get the job done, a great start here to game five. Really, who can push out and get a little run, it's really gonna help them a lot. Seferic to Wells, and a lift is called, Paxton by two. And when you're playing to 15, the last thing you want to do is get in a hole. That's right. It's hard to play out of a tough spot when you're down. Beveridge now. serving. Seferic to Hedrick. Big block there by Meyer. Paxton, though, able to keep it going. Here comes Meyer again. Great up. Dimmon all over the floor. And Meyer trying to swat it over. She can't. And Elba on the board. Down by one. Meyer's just the... High hand, she's coming down on the block. You can get her hand on there. Wasn't able to get it over the net, though. Paxton two, elbow one, game five. Service error, Christina Hedrick. And Paxton with a two-point lead in game five. Peterson serves. Frederick, long. 4-1 Paxton in game five. Peterson serving again. Seferic to Frederick. Fisher. And it never cleared the tape. And a point for Elba. They're down two here in game five. Peterson sets for Meyer. And now Wells. Fisher back to Meyer again. And Meyer puts it down. Good job again for Myers to come in and, and take care of business while she's in the front row. Tough blocker in Wells, but she really, Meyer's overpowering her. 5 2 Paxton. Amanda Gifford in to serve. Meyer back on the bench. Seferic to Frederick. Good up by Gifford. Second pass, good coverage by Wells. Now Wells with a swing, never got it over. Paxton leading six to two in game five. Buzzing in the middle of play. Seferic. And now Dimmitt. Paxton chases it down. Peterson over to Perlinger. Frederick set up for Fisher. Enough one for Fisher to do anything with. And now Frederick to work. And Frederick delivers the kill. Frederick comes up right when they need it. They needed the ball. They needed the point. And she's got a hole. She hits it in there. The block is the hole. Leaves the spot on the floor for her. Melissa Wells serves. In the middle, the kill for Jonna Perlinger. Donna Perlinger, again, just when they need, she struggled off and on. Here she comes up big when it really is needed. 7-3 in game five for Paxton. Dimmitt with the kill. Kelsey Dimmitt battling hard for Elba. Dennis really made some um, big plays at big times. A big spark plug for this Elba team. Sarah Frederick with the serve. Perlinger. 
Erlinger sets this time for Beveridge. Good ball now for Elba. Dimmitt. Nice up by Gifford. Got a hand on it. Elba continuing to work. So Farrick. Good up again. Here comes the swing from Perlinger, kept alive. Good rally here. Hedrick blocked right back. Hedrick will try it again. Kept alive by Peterson. Good up by Peterson. So Farrick to Frederick. Peterson right there to cover, and then it goes wide. The long rallies tonight, Elba's won most of them. Definitely, they just continue to be patient, keep the ball in play, they're not making the errors. 7-5, Paxton leads, but just by two. Perlinger, nice shot, that was a tough ball to do anything with. Beverage across. Hedrick, full head of steam, gets the kill. And elbow within one. Hedrick gets a good approach on that swing. She gets off the net. She drives in hard and really beats the block. They were there. She just broke through them. Madison Holes checking in for Amanda Gifford for Paxton. 7-6, Paxton in game five of the D2 championship. Divot sets for Burson. Burson off the block and gets the kill. And how about these Elba Blue Jays? They uh, have not backed down at any point during this game. They continue to push every moment. Substitution again. Gifford back into the Paxton lineup. 7-7 seven, seven in game five. Perlinger with the kill, and Paxton bound it back out in front. Perlinger again seems to be much more comfortable and in kind of in a rhythm here. Game four and then game five. Seferic to Dimmitt. Peterson sets it for Beveridge. Elba trying to keep it alive, they're not going to. Paxton with the point. Six points away from the crowd at 9-7. But Elba, two points right behind. They are right in the hunt. Anybody's championship still in game five. We've played this long and we still don't know. But Paxton getting closer. 10-7 Paxton. Court set, Beveridge with the dig. Now Beveridge the attack. Hedrick cannot get a hand on it. It's 11-7 Paxton leading by four. Closing in on a title, but Elba still right in it. Dimmitt, cross court shot is in. And the Blue Jays within three. Can they rally again? Dimmitt serves. Wide, big service error. Paxton gets the point, and it's back to the Tigers. And back into the front row comes Amber Meyer. Mallory Perlinger. Burson. Beveridge. And it'll drop. 13-8, a lift is called. 13-8, Paxton with the lead. The Elba contingent not happy with that. Perlinger serving two points from a championship. And an ace serve for Mallory Perlinger. She has really put together a great fourth and fifth game. Perlinger ready, one more point. Seferic. Hedrick. Kept alive and over. Still good. Elba playing it hard. And now Paxton with a good ball for the championship to Meyer. And Paxton wins the D2 state championship in five games over the Elba Blue Jays. What a match. 
in the D2 title game. Paxton comes out and completes a 25-0 season. The D2 championship belongs to the Paxton Tigers with a five-set thriller over the Elba Blue Jays. We'll hand out the awards next on NETV. TV sports coverage of the Nebraska High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. By Brian LGH Medical Center, the first name in healthcare. By the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, promoting soy biodiesel fuel, clean burning and renewable, making a difference for soybean farmers and you. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, community grants, and college planning services. Paxton Tigers, your Class D2 state champions. Let's take a look at the stats in this match. And Paxton at the end really able to assert themselves in the kill department and the assist. Ball handling got better for Paxton down the stretch. Elba showing their scrappy play, and that team Tip your cap to the Elba Blue Jays. They dove all over the court tonight. What a scrappy team, and they certainly deserve to be here. And the aces and blocks in favor of the Paxton Tigers. Let's go down to our Coliseum public address announcer, Dwight Weininger, for the awards presentation. The Nebraska School Activities Association is delighted to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Board of Control members Mike Troxell from Sutherland, Glenn Morgan from Neely Oakdale, and U.S. Bank Representative Ann Sampson. Here are the awards for Class D2 runner-up Elba High School. Will head coach Matt Kane and your assistant please step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each team member. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number one, Kelsey Dimmitt. Number two, Brenda Saferic. Number four, Brittany Christensen. Number six, Tracy Peterson. Number seven, Nicole Burson. Number eight, Sarah Frederick. Number nine, Christina Hedrick. Number 10, Jackie Fusset. Number 11, Katie Poss. Number 13, Diane Brumbaugh. Number 14, Kelsey Kim. Number 15, Melissa Wells. Number 16, Heather Gray. And number 17, Brandy Rasmussen. All of you are now welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Elba High School! And now, to the champions! First head coach, Jody Rhodes, we have a special award for you.
Now, coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. Are we good? Number one, Stacy Runback. Number two, Lindy Apollius. That was my favorite attitude. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> Danielle <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> Number four, Amanda Gipper. <laughs> Number five, <laughs> Samantha <laughs> Bowman. Number six, Gwen Stokey. Number seven, Alex Barger. Number eight, Allery Perlinger. Number nine, Betty Fisher. <laughs> Number 10, <laughs> Kara Beverage. <laughs> Number 11, <laughs> Hillary Martinuski. <laughs> I think you're pretty happy about that. Congratulations. Number 12, <laughs> Jana Perlinger. Number 13, <laughs> Madison Folds. <laughs> and number 15, Ember Meyer. And now, for these outstanding athletes in their school, here is the 2004 Class D2 State Volleyball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Paxton High School. Paxton Tigers in a five-game thriller over the Elba Blue Jays. We'll have more from the NU Coliseum in a moment on NETV Sports. There is the bracket that shows the Paxton Tigers are the champions of Class D2. They win the 9-5 over the Elba Blue Jays and finish at 25-0 on the 2004 season. Welcome back to the NU Coliseum along with Kathy Wieskamp. I'm Kevin Kugler. The highlights of this Class D2 state championship match that saw the Paxton Tigers win are straight ahead. Let's take a look and see what we've got tonight from the highlights as the Elba Blue Jays and the Paxton Tigers win at it hard. And Amber Meyer, Kathy, a big part of the Paxton win, both on the block and the attack. She played well both sides of the game, offensively and defense. A great battle between her and Wells in the middle. And for Elba, the Blue Jays, a very balanced attack, but Melissa Wells really helped the charge, along with some very good shots from Nicole Burson tonight. And Dimmon also came in and made some nice shots, just at key points. Again, making them when they needed them. See Meyer going to work there. When Amber Meyer was in the front row and they could get her the ball, she was dominant tonight. But when she went to the back row, Paxton struggled, and Elba took advantage of those struggles, especially in games two and three. Very patient they, they were. They had a few errors by Paxton, and really Elba really capitalized on those and just methodically continued to work and, and again, gave him some big wins. Paxton was down two games to one, but made the big comeback to win the state championship, winning game four, 25-15, and winning game five, 15-8, getting help from Betty Fisher and others along that Paxton offense. Elba forced into some mistakes, and Paxton at the end just too strong as they win their third straight state championship, two in Class D2, one in Class D1 last season. We'll talk with the victorious Paxton Tigers when we return to the NU Coliseum in a moment on NETV Sports. The Paxton Tigers are the champions of Class D2. Congratulations to the number two seed Paxton finishing their season at 25 and 0. Their head coach is Jody Rhodes and he's standing by with our Kathy Wieskamp. Coach Rhodes, feel a little bit more relaxed after that final um, point, that ball landed on the floor. You gotta feel great about a hard fought battle. 
Well, we do. I mean, that's that. There's so much adrenaline flowing, and I don't know what we got up. We got up by five or six points uh, um, early in that fifth set, and you knew you, you you just you couldn't get too excited about what was going on because you knew they were going to make another run or, or at least one anyway, and they did. So uh, um, you know you, you couldn't get overconfident at that time. You just had to remember why you were um, up by five or six and, and how you got there and that was staying aggressive and and you know that that's uh, easier said than done when you're when you're down two one and and, and you're and you tell the kids we need to be more aggressive you know that that opens up the door to possibly make making some more hitting errors but I don't think we could have made any more hitting errors than we did in the second set so it was worth a try team really came out strong but then struggled in the middle of the match in games two and three like you said a lot of hitting errors really did they feel like they were trying to make some adjustments uh, over aggressive what do you think really kind of was the cause of that well you know it's it's also tough playing a team that's as relentless on defense as uh, Elba is because they did just won't let the ball drop you know if they don't block you they're gonna dig you and then they're either gonna um, they're gonna either give you power or they're gonna finesse you and and they've you just you have to always be thinking against that team and and I and I think that probably uh, got in our heads a little bit that uh, some of our best stuff uh, wasn't working and then all of a sudden we started making a lot of hitting errors and and you know when you when you give away points against a team like Elba you're asking to go into the next set which is what we kept doing so really then but when you came out in game four really seemed like you got back on track with your offense any adjustments that you made in that gap or did the players just start getting in the groove and it just started working for them well our passing was, was a we were anticipating much better. Um, we were reading the hitter a lot better, and we weren't always sealing the blocks to the outside. And, and it was really tough getting the block in the middle the way uh, they were cutting around our, our middle blocker. So uh, we were getting into the gaps off of our block, and I think we were lining up probably behind our block too much, I, I would imagine. And, and, and the girls just made a little bit of an adjustment in the back row, and actually started stepping through the ball instead of waiting for it. And I think that made a made a big difference. But uh, a determination uh, was a big thing. And, and the, the, the thing that we probably talked about the most in the huddle um, in between sets was that we've been in this situation before this year and we've been in this situation before in the past. And, and it's not time to uh, um, give up hope yet. And it's time to go out there, just get stronger. And, and they were able to do that. Do you feel too, because of your experience and some of the leadership from your seniors, that was something that really the kids looked to, the, their teammates looked to, to, I guess, draw from those to help them push through that final game? Well, I could tell just by body language um, that they weren't panicking, um, you know, and they weren't taking things for granted. They were going out and they were being the aggressor, and you could just tell by their by the way they were handling themselves, and and, and that that makes you. As a coach, it gives you a good feeling knowing that they're not up, they're not uptight, and they got every reason to be, but they're not uptight, and, and and they're going out and trying to take control of the game instead of letting Elba have the control of the game. Do you feel too just a strong, consistent play all season help them as they're coming to this? A perfect record by the end of the season that's tough to do. That mental toughness was there really when they needed it. Well, sure it is, but uh, you know, being undefeated isn't by by far isn't isn't a goal that we. Um, look to achieve. It's just something that happens if you achieve those short-term goals, and you know that's just a bonus at the end of the season if that happens. And you know, you know, being in lots of situations, um, like you say, when you, when you do have an undefeated record, um, that that's on the line. But if that's not a big concern of yours a, 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 of dropping a game, then it, then it's not such a, a mind-wearing uh, thing that you have to deal with. And, and dropping a game just wasn't a big concern of theirs, you know. Playing to, up to their potential was, and uh, you know their attitudes when they got down were probably just the way they needed to be early in the season. Probably weren't, but that's when you learn, and and, and that's what they did. They learned as they went on, and they got better. Well, one game at a time. It ended up perfect. It didn't necessarily be the plan, but it's a great plan and a great finish. Congratulations on your state championship. Thank you very much. Kevin, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you very much, Kathy. We'll be back to you in just a bit to check in with some of the champions who won this one on the court. Paxton, your Class D2 state champions. The Paxton Tigers are your D2 state champions. The third straight championship for Paxton. They won D2 in 2002 and D1 last season back in D2. Same results for the Paxton Tigers as they win and are now 25-0 on the season. Kathy Wieskamp is standing by with some of the champions of the Tigers. 
Hi, I'm here with Daniel Peterson, the championship setter. It's got to be fun to be the kind of the quarterback and running this system. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. You know, um, the passes were there, and I happened to get him up to the setter or to the hitter, so it was, it was just a lot of fun getting him down. So. Really, you got a, a great middle, and in Myers there, it's fun to get the ball to her. But also, you had, really, when she's in out of the front row, you got a lot of options up there, and you really did a good job spreading it around. Yeah, we can go to any hitter, and you know we're confident with them to put it down, and so it's pretty exciting just to have all those options when you're out there. As a setter, game two, game three, struggled a little bit offensively. You stayed very poised, continued, kept working, kept mixing around, trying to find who had the hot hand at all times. Yep, sometimes it just doesn't work out for you. You just got to keep working at it and keep chipping away, you know, and we, we had a good comeback there, and it just didn't work out for us, but we ended up with the win, so. Really, what do you, do you kind of attribute to getting you guys back on track? Because really, when you came out in game four, you struggled in game two and three with offense, came out in game four, and really seemed to be clicking again. Any big changes or adjustments that you made that felt really made a difference for you? Oh, not really. We just knew the pressure was, the pressure was on, so we had to step it up, and we did, so. Also, very aggressive defensively. Alba just kept pursuing balls, kept it alive. Your team as well continued real feisty in the back row. You got a lot of balls up, some tough balls that you really handled well. Team defense really stepped up. Yeah, we, we knew they'd be a pretty scrappy team, keeping everything off the floor. We watched them in the game last night, and we knew that's how they played. So we knew we had to keep everything off just as much as they did. And so we were ready to play like that, and we stepped up to the challenge. So, Well, you stepped up and did a fine job. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Next, I have Amber Myers, again, our big medal. Just a, a great showing today. Um, again, somebody who's been consistent all year long in the middle and a big offensive threat for this team. Um, yeah, this year's just been great for us. I mean, we've really worked hard. We're all really great friends. We just work really together as a team well. Really, uh, the team leadership, you had some seniors. You just a junior yet. You get to come back. Did you really um, you know, rely on those seniors to really help guide you through this season? Yeah, they've definitely got us through this season, and it, it's it's kind of sad to see them go, but um, I'm excited for next season, too. You know, a, a great battle between you and Wells at the net. It's fun. You know, it's also a great challenge, but it's, again, it's fun to go head-to-head -head with another uh, great player. Uh, she's really, uh, she's a good hitter. Even though she's only 5'7", she can jump like no other and get up. But, yeah, I think we keep it pretty much controlled in the first set. We we had her down, and then she had troubles uh, getting back up, started to tip, and that really helped us. Again, though, as you two kept battling, kept making adjustments, it's kind of like a chess match, counterplay. You want to go to one side, try and take that away, see how she responds. And again, same thing with you offensively, seeing what she's going, what she's doing, and what your options were attacking. Yeah, pretty much. Um, we knew that she normally goes to the right side, so then I tried to block her right, but and then she started hitting left, so we just had to kind of work with it because we both try to do, try to mix it up a little bit, so nobody gets the block. <laughs> really, and you came out in that fifth game after winning game four. It was a big push for you to get that game four. Came out game five very strong. You started off dominating right at the net. Really gave a lot of fire, and, and your team really a lot of momentum at that point. Well, yeah, when it's a championship game, you uh, you have a lot of momentum, and uh, you just want to you just want to win, and you know you can do better, so just try and try and try, and we did it. Well, you tried and you, you succeeded. It was a great match. Congratulations. I've got one more state champion here. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, it, it's really fun to see you out there playing. Had a struggle, off and but really how you maintained and, and kept yourself together game four. You really came out and really made a big difference. Yeah, we got determined and just played as hard as we could. Um, Again, a senior, you've been out here before. The new venue here, uh, playing on the Coliseum floor, it's got to be fun to be out there. Awesome. I love the Coliseum. I wish I could play here every day. <laughs> again, you guys took that. Again, your experience from the previous season, stepping out here, a new venue, Okay, came out strong in game one, worked hard and maintained your poise through game two and three. That You struggled there a little bit as a team, maybe not playing up to what you had earlier. What really do you attribute to maybe making some changes? Um, at districts, we went five sets, so we just took the experience in and played our hearts out. Really, it, it's fun to see, again, a team who can in, handle, I guess, adversary when they're going through that. They really, you guys stepped up. And again, you really pulled together instead of pulling apart, which happens oftentimes. Again, great leadership by you, stepping in there, taking charge of that. Yeah, we just, we blend well as a team, and we work hard as a team.
Well, Mallory, 